Welcome to this video about February 2023's new moon in Pisces. We are the astrologers of Pandora Astrology. I'm Jamie Kale Miller. I'm in Berkeley, California. And I'm Julia Mijas, and I'm in San Francisco, California. In this video, we're going to tell you about this moon, including what it will feel like, when it's happening, and best ways to handle it. And if you're curious about this moon's impact on your own chart, in a little bit, I'll give you something you can do about that. We're calling this moon Birth Dreams Grounded in Logic. And this really has a lot to do with how this moon and sun together here uh, are in Pisces. And so there's so much about dreaming and imagining, fantasizing, and, um, and you know, just dwelling in that space of the metaphysical rather than the physical about this moon. Because new moons are about birth. They're about new beginnings. And, uh, and so dreams need to be born when a new moon is happening in Pisces. But look at that Saturn right there. And we know that Saturn is such a grounded planet. It's so much about uh, grounding things in the real, proof of concept, um, making it happen, building a strong foundation, all of those very physical approaches. And so these dreams need to be grounded because of the proximity of Saturn. And Saturn's in Aquarius, a sign that it loves to be in. And um, also a sign, I mean, it loves to be in Aquarius because traditionally it rules Aquarius. Aquarius is, you know, when you think about it, really, it's a little surprising how Saturnine Aquarius really is because uh, Aquarius as a fixed sign can get into some very stubborn ideas and stubborn ideologies and, and can get very fixed in its opinions and approaches. Um, and then equally will enjoy breaking out of those opinions and approaches. But, um, but when I say here grounded in logic, I'm really talking about this Saturn in Aquarius. So, you know, if you dream something up during this moon, you might try grounding it in logical experimentation to see if the dream might actually fly. Now, this moon has a lot of... Um, has more harmony than stress in it. In fact, it doesn't really have any stress. There's nothing that squares or opposes this moon. Um, if if you want to call this conjunction to Saturn stress, I mean, you could certainly do that. But um, what I'm really noticing are the trines to the nodes, to the south node in Scorpio, to the north node in Taurus, and um, and how they are assisting and helping these dreams to be born. That south node has been traveling through Scorpio for more than a year now and is really getting ready to, you know, let go and release of uh, a lot of pain and bitterness and resentment from the past. And the north node in Taurus is saying, let's lean into a future that is more peaceful, more solid, um, more, um, more consistent, more uh, reliable. And, um, and let go of some of that drama from that south node in Scorpio. So the moon uh, in Pisces is really getting so much good and so much support out of this nodal axis. And, uh, and it weaves in with Saturn really well because uh, the south node in Scorpio is telling the moon when you dream, you can let go of past pains, past resentments, and, and just dream freely into the future. Um, and then the North Node in Taurus is saying, and you'll, you're going to want to ground that in something actual and, um, and dream something that, that could be consistent, that could really stick. Oh. And uh, Saturn's in pretty strong agreement with all of that stuff. Julia, what do you think about this moon? What are you noticing? Mm. 
Well, since new moons are when the sun and the moon are in the exact same spot in the sky, you know, there's a really, really strong concentration of, of a sign in a new moon because we have both the moon and the sun in Pisces. So Pisces is a sign that can do have a lot to do with creativity. Uh, also, it's a sign that is part of the axis of service, you know, the axis of the Virgo and uh, Pisces together. Uh, Pisces is about more altruistic, spiritual service as well so it's it's a helpful sign uh in its own way it, it, it wants to it wants to be of service um so uh you know and it's a little bit escapist too but so this is new moon could be a time where you're sort of launching something in your life um where maybe a creative project that would be actually really great under this new moon because of the north node being in the sign taurus venus's sign also a very uh creative sign there so bringing those two together there would be a wonderful time uh, to do something creative, but with discipline because we've got Saturn in there. Um, and, you know, if this is a time where you're of service uh, to someone in your life, maybe you're trying to help somebody out, somebody in emotional distress, somebody, you know, somebody who needs to be sort of taken care of a little bit, um, you know, that Saturn in there is kind of saying to me, you know, trying to help somebody help themselves a little bit. Um, you know, Pisces is all is extremely compassionate and just wants to connect. But Saturn in there is saying, you know, don't just connect, um, you know, on an emotional level or or just kind of feed somebody endlessly with your compassion, you know, do something a little bit more practical and, you know, help them help themselves a little bit. Because Saturn is definitely a pull yourself up by uh, your bootstraps type of planet. Yep, God helps those that help themselves and the planets do too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love that service orientation of this moon. That's really, really sweet because like if you feel like a person who doesn't have a lot of imagination and you don't want to use this moon for an artistic project, you can use it for charity. Just go mm. down to your local soup kitchen and volunteer, you know, um, that's such a great use of this moon and to do something really practical and to help somebody else bootstrap themselves where, you know, maybe they just needed a little nudge from you and, and it gets them back on their feet and that can be so meaningful. Well, when it comes to birthdays that are going to feel this, um, you'll see that the birthdays will span fixed and mutable signs. This moon is placed at one degree of Pisces and therefore uh, birthdays on five days either side of that are going to really feel this. So um, some of these birthday spans that I give you are going to be spanning two signs. So in particular, Aquarians, uh, late Aquarians and early Pisceans born February 14th to 25th will feel this moon. Also late Geminis and late, late Tauruses and early Geminis. Um, this is June 17 to 28, but that can't be right. It must be May 17 to 28. Uh, and then we have late Leos and early Virgos. That would be August 8th, 19th to the 30th. And then we have late Scorpios and early Sagittarians born November 18th to 29th. And if your birthday falls in any of those date spans and you want to know more, you'll be able to book that reading at the link in the description below and get in the driver's seat of your life. Well, that's all for today. In this video, we gave you a lot of clues about February's full moon in Leo and how you can handle it for best results. We love making these videos for you. And if you love them too, then please hit the like button. And we make these videos for you for free. And if you appreciate it, subscribing is the best way to show it. Let your friends know about our videos too. Have a fantastic February, and until next time, we'll see you around the cosmos. Bye-bye.